Good morning, folks. I thought we'd start today with some more solar tornadoes. These are bigger than Earth. There are at least two, maybe more, all part of an incoming filament on the north. By the way, if you get a chance to get outside in the next few days before sunrise, Jupiter is brilliant and the last light shining as the sun wipes the stars clean before breaking the horizon. We're looking at the solar wind now and there's no clear corona hole impact, which we expected, but the density readings are spiking intermittently. We've got some variable speed as well. We're in and out of geomagnetic instability. Rio meters show slight plasma penetration, but nothing major. Low energy proton flux is rising slightly, but the electrons took a pretty good whack. Eyes open for more. So the solar flaring is dying down and that may continue. Our best bet for flaring is the departing spots, but that would be more of a proton flux concern than for an Earth-directed CME. Incoming spots are just so-so. We've got mixing potential up north, but truly this is more of a solid beta-gamma classification. Down south, it's tough to definitively call delta or the gamma class, but it appears to have some complexity despite its smaller size. Big plasma filament departing the Earth-facing disk. So we turn our attention in this realm to the smaller ones on the south. Folks, I literally just started shaking my head when I saw this. It's not definitive, but it looks like there's a darn good chance that the solar polar fields are not done with their reversal this cycle. The north field must be positive for good this round to officially enter the next solar cycle. How about some good news? The Earth-facing Corona Hole on the south caused us to enter our latest quake watch, but thus far we've had no bigger ones. Iceland is ticking back up a bit with some elevated readings. Official magnitude on this quake is only 5.3, however. Oklahoma with a solid little swarm as well, even for the heavily fracked area. Perhaps we'll avoid the big ones this round with only another 36 hours to go. One note. There are a few more buoys offline around these areas than we like to see. It's not a problem until it's a problem. One article today is on ice mapping and it elucidates the volumetric changes in contrast to our usual surface ice discussions. Kicking right to the tropics where Fanfone appears ready to do what Kamuri could not shoot right for Japan. Back across the Pacific. Rachel lives on and we've got another storm brewing to the southeast. Should be named in the next few days. If you remember yesterday we discussed the chances for storms and snow or hail on the east and west sides of this low respectively. It was trekking east from dumping floods on Arizona and Utah. Well the severe storms were easily handled but the story was the cold. The western edge pulled a good bit of that chill down to meet the moisture coming north and this was the scene across much of Colorado yesterday. Hail and resulting floods, some property damage as well. And not much has changed today. The low is creeping across the country very slowly and will again cause severe alerts on its eastern edge and hail and snow warnings across a very large area in its wake. Southeastern Australia has the edge of an Antarctic low cresting atop the land. Meanwhile, the same reinforced flow aims at the North Island of New Zealand. Those are your watch zones here tonight. Meanwhile, the big low remains up north atop Iceland it will come down quite a bit again today there. We've also got some minor storm warnings on the main continent. Mobile Observatory is off to Joplin. Got some shots of our star to close at 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.35 a.m. Central. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.